YouTube. Welcome YouTube. Tom here from Orange Systems and Unify has sent me a Unify door access system. Now, no, I don't usually review door access systems and no, I've not deployed any of these in production, but I think they have a clever product here that was worth looking at. So when Unify reached out to me, said, would you like to review this? And full disclosure, they sent me this. I did not pay for this. Um, I said, sure, because I like the way that they have done interfaces on some other technologies, such as networking. I think they have an interface that makes it a little bit easier to use. And they're seemingly bringing some of that same design over to the door access, which kind of makes the system as easy for end users to use, um, but still requires some skill to deploy. It didn't have the best instructions, but that's what this review is about to kind of walk you through the process, talk about my likes and don't likes. Uh, but before we dive into all that, let's first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now, back to our content. And one of the things I want to get out of the way right up front. So this is their Unify Door Access Reimagined Unify Access System. And the requirement that it only can work with a UDM Pro is my first major problem with this system. I really wish Unify would have launched this product with support for more than just the UDM Pro. In the rack over here, out of view is the UDM Pro. Above it, you see a Unify NVR, which is driving the cameras behind us. If they would have integrated it into the Protect system, that would be amazing. It seems like they should have done that. I just wanted to you know, express my concern. Maybe someone at Unify is listening. I imagine at some point in the future, they will release more support for this, but the Unify Dream Machine Pro to me is such a basic device. It doesn't have the use case of a lot of our clients. It just doesn't have enough features, so we just don't push it. We don't really sell a lot of it. That being said, to buy one just to integrate into this seems kind of like an annoyance um, that I really wish they would have solved prior to launch. And let's talk about what this system costs. So we have $499 for this Unify Access Starter Kit. That's what we have here. One access hub. So for each door, you need a hub. Then we have a Access Card Reader Pro, Access Card Reader Lite, and Unify Access Cards, 20 count. And good news is they're using standard NFC, which I'll demonstrate here in a minute, that allows you to use more than just their cards. So you can use their cards or you can use third-party stuff. We'll get into that in a minute. The Unify Access Reader Lite, kind of basic, and that's this device right here. It does the job and works and beeps to let you know something worked or... Let's see if I can get it to these cards here. Show you a different card that's not registered. Blink's kind of red, it's got a little light behind there. So that's an unregistered card sound versus a registered card sound. Novel, cool, and expensive. The other one it comes with is the Unify Access Reader Pro, and that's the one here. This is a touchscreen display. Um, not much you can do with the touchscreen. Um, there is an admin panel on it, so you can touch it and get into the admin on there and put a username and password. Um, kind of neat, it blinks, it displays the picture of different Welcome. things on there. YouTube. And as I said, both of these support the if you use a third-party NFC. So this is a really cool device and that little camera at the top. And someone's gonna point out, hey, isn't that another product that Unify tried releasing before? Yeah, I'll leave a link to that. Um, I don't really know what happened to the front row product line. And Chris mentioned it and Chris from Crosstalk Solutions mentioned this whole device set up in his video as well and talks a little bit about the front row, which was some other live camera thing that you would wear and this was the form factor that it was in. So they stuck a POE on the back and plugged it into here. All right, back to the unified door access. So the requirements for this are going to be, well, the starter kit, or if you wanna buy these individually, for each door, you do need the unified access hub, but one unified Dream Machine Pro will run multiple door hubs. So this is kind of a nice feature of it, and I'll get to the adoption and how these get set up in a minute, but essentially pretty straightforward adoption method. So they were actually really easy to configure and set up. And that's one of the advantages Unify has is making these essentially without a ton of documentation or manual easy to set up and deploy, which is great because um, the quick start guide, 
yeah, here you go. Here's your um, quick start guide. It's just not extensive. There's not uh, a lot on here. So it, good news is I figured it all out. Um, but the other side of that is if you're, depending on your electronics savviness and your understanding of how door access system works, um, the manual, you just flip through all of it. Right now, there's not an absolute ton of documentation. They do have some sample uh, topologies set up on here, you know, what you need and how you want to configure it here. All right. Now, I didn't do an unboxing and I'll reference and leave a link to Chris from Crosstalk's video, but box yeah it's nice uh things are well packaged and secure inside of here it's got different mounts for both the devices that they shipped with it including this so you'd have to do like a you know drill this out it's got a little holder if you want to put this next to your door for the access so that's cool there are also little magnets in the box to hold it closed like i said packaging um a plus on that no problems there i'm just not big on unboxing and what's in the box to me is what's the most relevant part of this now, when you go set this up, it's go into your Dream Machine Pro, you load the access software, and then you plug all the devices in. And they start showing up in here. Matter of fact, under elements is where you see all the devices and then they have a dashboard in here. And you can see all the times it was swiping, like right here. You can see who swiped and then have a picture or a camera because I was facing the studio camera. That's the view you're getting right here. And occasionally was looking at the ceiling while I was goofing and playing with it. And yeah, pretty neat the way all this works. And even though we got these studio lights on, it actually sees quite well. Uh, like that wonderful picture of my finger when I'm trying to set it up and hold it down. I think there's all kinds of times I was just looking down on it. And you can see all the little icons. I like the way, because I have the octopus in here, it's got the octopus icons, the Lucina icons, and you can just mouse over these. So from an interface standpoint, great. As far as adopting the elements, yeah, they show up on adopted. Uh, then you adopt them in there and then it has the topology which is kind of cool because you say here's the unified dream machine pro there's studio door uh, first floor you can name these whatever you want we just i'm in the studio i called it studio door and then we have the different devices that are attached to that and these are all collapsible so if you had this group together so you have one dream machine but a series of door access controllers and then you would be able to talk to or see visually how each one of these is attached and they do have the option so these are currently both set up to be for entry, but you can choose whether these are at the entry or exit side of a door. And the reason you do that is because if you needed someone to scan in, scan out, you could have them scan in, so you, the door unlocks and scan out. So you set the method by which these are set up, and then you can create all the groupings and uh, access controls around that. Now, things I didn't see, despite all the access logs they have, is I didn't see any activity reports. And I bring that up because if you were to use this, or if you've used some of the really high-end door access control systems, what you'll end up with, if people swipe in and out, they can give you like current count of people that are in a room. This many people swiped in, this many people swiped out. And of course, um, there's even real advanced systems that watch for tailgating and watch the head count, so how many people go through. Um, this is not quite that advanced. It's somewhat basic but then again some of those really advanced systems are actually a little bit pricey um this is a good in between despite not having all of that extra functionality in there and then you can jump right to the captures of course this is only with the pro reader model and just scroll through captures because maybe you want to know who swiped and we have which nfc card swiped on here and which one was you know what view it had so was it actually tom or is it someone with tom's card that came through did lucina come through or someone with lucina's card come through and i thought this is a you know easy way to do this for so for basic access and having you know being able to jump backwards a few weeks to look at who accessed what pretty intuitive this like i said for, from an end user standpoint was pretty easy uh to go through the logs and figure out how all this works now here's all the users that are in here and what does it take to add another user it's actually really simple. You can go here and add a user and assign them to an existing card. You can import users via CSV, or we can start with the card and add the card and then add to the user. And let's kind of walk through that process. It's actually pretty straightforward. And we'll go ahead and let's uh, get another user. And we're gonna go ahead and unassign their card and delete it so I can just reuse the same card again. So. Here we go. We're gonna go put this essentially in add mode. Now to put this in add mode, we just go to add card. We choose which reader that we wanna do this with. We're gonna select uh, this one here. It can be done with either one. And it's gonna make it in reader mode so it will assign someone. 
Tap card here, more than five seconds. And that's it. It's now popped up over here. We can now say new user, assign to new user or existing user. I could type a username and assign it them, or we can say existing user, and we'll put it back, just give them their same card back. We've assigned it, done. We've now pushed that back over there. So now if we scan that person again. Invalid card. Ah, why did it do that, you're wondering? That's because I'm doing this in real time. There seems to be a roughly 30 second or so delay from the time you push a setting in here before it reaches these devices. I bring that up because it doesn't tell you this. It just save, if there's not any type of progress. It says wait 30 seconds. So just be patient and wait 30 seconds and it works. Welcome, another user. Another user. So we're back to having that user assigned. And this same process works for third party cards. So the third party cards I have here, and one of them is going to be just this NFC I've taped to the bottom of an octopus as we go here. And welcome, octopus. pretty straightforward there. So let me look at the overhead again and show you what this looks like. If we look, we have these little stickers. I just got it held on with a piece of tape, but this is a little NFC sticker. These are programmable ones we have for a completely unrelated to YouTube project that my staff is working on for putting stickers on things with NFC. So we have these 3D printed octopuses and we just grabbed one of those and it worked. Then I said, hey, because of what that project's related to, I wonder if it works with these Amiibos, which are part of the Nintendo Switch platform. And so I uh, had one of these, it's Lucina. And once again, it... Welcome, Lucina. Says her name a little bit wrong, but it does say Lucina. So these have NFC tags in them as well. So you can actually assign, and I think this is a way cooler thing. Um, if you don't want to get the Unify cards, you can get a bunch of Amiibos or whatever, or program your own NFCs, or I'm sure, and I don't know exactly, I think they have the standard it works with you. They have like NFC rings, they have all kinds of things. So this kind of makes door access fun. And I'm happy to say that it doesn't just work with the Unify cards because well, that opens up that much more opportunity. Now a little bit about the setup here and what you're looking at, which my little lights fell over. The way the door access system functions. And so the demo we have here is this 12 volt LED light, this fluke meter sitting at 12 volts. This is to show you that it's a 12 volt output for the maglock and the way this works. And if you're not familiar with door access systems, uh, you have a couple different options over here. And actually it's probably easier because this is small. I'm gonna pull it up in the documentation and we'll start with the input relays. You have request to enter, request to exit, door position center, remote release. Now what these are is request to exit is when you sometimes have a button by a door so you can hit it and it lets you unlock the door and releases the maglock. Request to enter is sometimes where someone buzzes you in. So someone comes in to get buzzed in and you have someone at the door and it goes, yeah, I'm gonna let you in and hits the button. And the same thing like the remote release and door position sensor. Now these can also be controlled with, as I understand, but this is a little outside of my expertise in door access systems. You can put motion control systems on here. And some of these are required on the doors. Uh, so when you come into a door, you know, you swipe in to get into a building, but what if there's a event like a fire that has to let you out of the building, you wanna be able to go through that door rather quickly. You can have motion sensors on the door or even the door strikers where you push those and it releases the mag lock from the inside. Now, output relay with no power or outright output relay with 12 volt DC. We're actually using specifically the 12 volt DC output. Now, one of those things, this light's being on because it powers until... Welcome, Lucina. Someone hits the button and allows them out. So there's a pause and you can set the delay for how long that pause is. But it's doing is when it releases power, that would also release the mag lock. Now, all this is powered via in a requirement as well as PoE++. And so your network switch has to have PoE++ in order to get all these devices working because these work in pass-through of this. Now, something of note, you do not have to have a Unify switch and I can verify that because purposely I stuck this on an Aruba switch I had just to make sure that it worked with non-Unify. So if you already have existing infrastructure and it's not Unify, yeah, as long as it's PoE++, it should work perfectly fine. So that's just an important uh, thing to note and remember. Also, what if it loses communication? What happens? Well, first problem is going to be this, of course. You notice how the light went out and the voltage went out. Well, that means if we lose power, the door fails open. There's ways around that by doing different types of relay setups um, where you can have it. And as I understand, I'm not an expert at this, it will go ahead and 
fail closed, but that also means no one can swipe or do anything, so they can create different problems. But if it does fail, when if by losing power, it's going to release the mag lock. But please note, even though it's not booted yet, and these are in boot mode, and this is still booting up and not adopted, you saw all the lights blinking here, you notice as soon as I plugged it in, the light came on. So as soon as it gets power, not when it boots up, it automatically sends power to the 12 volt system. When sending power to the 12 volt system, it then will allow even this right here, which is just a momentary context switch. Matter of fact, it's a power button for a PC. It'll allow that button to work, but until these get talking to the controller and get everything going again, um, they're not quite ready for uh, communicating and swiping cards. But I did all this in real time on purpose because now this one is ready. This one boots up really fast. This one boots up. I didn't start the stopwatch, but it could always go back in a video. Still reasonably fast. I would say that's less than 30 seconds. And it's ready to swipe again oh. when you have it reading properly. Give it a second here. Still not reading. So it does take a few extra seconds, even though it says it's ready. Apparently it's not ready until this is finished booting up. So this part's booting, even though this is talking. And actually, let's look over to the software here. Yeah, I can talk to these, but it's not talking to this yet. So as soon as this turns completely live, and I'm not editing this part, I'm doing this all in real time, so you can kind of get an idea that, yeah, it takes a second if you reboot this before everything starts communicating. All right, and... Hey, there we go. So it, well, that was a good maybe minute and a half, I'm thinking. Like I said, I didn't have a stopwatch started before that started working, but. Welcome, YouTube. So now it's working again and it's working. So it does the full thing where it will unlock the door, everything's communicating, etc. Now let's try something else. This is not a question that some people had asked and I was curious about as well. What happens if you lose network communication? Not power, obviously we know power means fail open in the configuration I have, but if I disconnect this network cable, we're going to lose the communication between the UDM here, the Unify Access, so now they are no longer connected, but the switch, it still has power. And how does that work? Well, this is actually something that was pretty simple, and I kind of expected this behavior. So even though this is, you know, down, once again, all this is real time, I didn't edit this, this is down, no communication. The last remembered cards Welcome, YouTube. are all in there. Welcome, Lucina. So while I can't add or remove any cards, hey, they still completely function. And that's actually kind of a nice feature of this is the cards keep working. And I find it interesting because obviously the voice control systems are all working without communication back to the uh, UDM. So that's a pretty important aspect, I think. As a matter of fact, let's swipe in the octopus as well. Welcome, octopus. So we did that. And now I'm going to plug network connectivity back in and switch back over here. It's going to take a second and something, because I've already tested this, I already know what happens. Once this gets reconnected, the last one we had swiped was the octopus. So as soon as this gets communication again, it's going to pull the logs from it. So it does continue to log events, even if it loses c communication with the controller. And there we are. Here's all those logs coming back into there. Now, what I don't know, and I didn't do extensive testing in how many logs will fill up prior to that. I know it handles a few. I don't know if, how many swipes it will handle before it runs out of log space, but I'll go with an assumption. There's a decent amount of log space in there, but it's not something I really have time to test. But my overall thoughts on this, I, you know, testing it, everything seems to work. Everything was really, you know, I would say relatively intuitive to set up. I like the interface. I think it's something you can give to end users, uh, some, you know, admin level people without having a deep level technical skill and go, hey, manage this system and, you know, add users, remove users, swipe a card. Everything was like I walked through on here, pretty straightforward to do. But that big hang up I have still is the Unify NVR not being supported on here because that would be ideal. So now if you want to sell someone a Unify Protect system with a few cameras and integrate with their door access system and tie it all together, that would be great. The, you know, I don't know why they chose to only have the UDM Pro, which is the one thing that's really bothering me about this product. And uh, I just want to throw that out there that I guess if you already have a Unify Dream Machine Pro and you're really liking it because you just don't need any of the advanced features that aren't offered on it and it does fit for you and we know plenty of people like that. Um, awesome, this is kind of a cool add-in for a relatively inexpensive door access system. 
once you don't have to buy the EDM Pro. If you're looking for a system that is all self-hosted and doesn't send data to the cloud, et cetera, as I know that is another niche they cover, that's another nice feature of this is that, except when you sign up for the UDM Pro, um, that does require you to register with the Ubiquiti account and things like that. So once again, even though this doesn't re seem to require any sign up for the cloud, it did require me to register to UDM Pro with the cloud when I set it up. So this kind of does as well. But my overall thoughts on it, I hope they keep developing this platform and I hope it keeps moving forward because I like to see, you know, technology that has a nicer interface on it because uh, some of the other commercial door access systems I've dealt with have been less than intuitive, really ugly old Windows applications that look like they did when I first started working in tech and I used to deal with some of the really old door swipe systems. Um, they didn't seem to have improved some of them that much. But hey, uh, it's uh, way forward. It's pretty cool. And uh, I'll leave links to where you can buy all this at Unify. I don't think there's any Amazon links for that I've seen at, the, at this time where they can be bought. Um, all this is purchased directly from Unify. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.